Hi, Paratown Weather Meteorologist. Paul Dorian here on Thursday, July 29th. Yesterday we posted about the possibility of severe weather today in the Mid-Atlantic region, and indeed that severe weather threat is still on the table. This could include anything from hail to heavy rain, even isolated tornadoes in the Mid-Atlantic region later on this afternoon, and we'll focus in on that threat over the next several minutes, talking about some of the ingredients involved. The uh, NOAA's Storm Prediction Center, based in Norman, Oklahoma, had a slight chance of severe weather yesterday for the Mid-Atlantic region. Indeed, in the overnight hours, they increased that to an enhanced threat for the, basically the region right here between D.C. and southeastern Pennsylvania. You really can extend that all the way up to New York City. So again, a very real threat of severe weather today in the Mid-Atlantic region, especially in the region from D.C., to Philadelphia, perhaps even to New York City. In the overnight hours, there was a very strong line of severe thunderstorms that pushed through Wisconsin in a northwest to southeast direction. That line has not disappeared, and in fact, the remains of that line will play a key role in what happens later on this afternoon. Well, let's take a look at the latest radar from WSI's IntelliCast.com. Come, uh, starting off with a still image here, a couple areas I want to point out. Right here there was a, a little band of showers that moved through southeastern Pennsylvania and now into southern New Jersey. Kind of an important player here. We talked about this in yesterday's posting that if this turned out to be longer lasting than expected, it could actually reduce the chances for severe weather this afternoon because of the low clouds associated with it. It could, in fact, uh, limit daytime heating. I don't think that will be likely, however. It looks like there is a low stratus deck across much of southeastern Pennsylvania, uh, northern Delaware, south, uh, southern New Jersey right now, but for the most part that should dissipate by the late morning, midday hours and allow for enough daytime heating to really destabilize the atmosphere. Again, that's uh, there was a little bit of hope for that to suppress conditions for this afternoon. I don't think uh, that that um, uh, will actually happen. I think the severe weather threat certainly continues. Now, last night in the overnight hours, we had a tremendous line of storms move through uh, Wisconsin again in a northwest to southeast fashion, and that the remnants of that line now is right in this region right here. It is certainly not dissipated completely. It's it really could, could have been referred to as a derecho, which is essentially just a long-lasting line of severe thunderstorms. It will move right into the Mid-Atlantic region over the next several hours and certainly play a, a key role in what does develop this afternoon. Again, again all of this moving from northwest to southeast. Is, in fact, let's, let's play the animation right now. You can see this is driving to the southeast now, the remains of an overnight mesoscale complex of thunderstorms, or perhaps you could call it a, a derecho, now moving into the eastern Ohio Valley, and all that will be right in this region uh, during the afternoon hours and certainly play a key role in the potential of severe weather in the mid-Atlantic region. Well, let's get into some of the specific ingredients involved in the threat for severe weather this afternoon. I want to use the high resolution model of the NAM, the three kilometer resolution version. I think it has a, the best handle on the situ situation developing for the mid-Atlantic region. First of all, we have an upper level wave of energy, a vorticity max. You can see that right here crossing the eastern Great Lakes right now. This is the early morning hours, about 8 a.m. forecast map from last night's 6Z run of the NAM for the vorticity field. That's a spin in the atmosphere. It's one of the key ingredients. That just drives to the south and east along with that line of storms into the mid-Atlantic region by the early to mid-afternoon. This is not necessarily an event that will take place in the usual time period for DC, Philadelphia, New York City of 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. It could uh, develop in the early to mid-afternoon hours and continue into the early evening. So be on the lookout for that. It, it slowly moves through the area. This is now late afternoon. Again, upper level energy, ingredient number one. And then by the time uh, we get to the overnight hours, it moves off the coast and a much, much more comfortable air mass 
uh, pours into the mid-Atlantic region on Friday, riding in on strong northwesterly winds, gusts tomorrow 25 to perhaps 30 miles per hour, lowering humidity, and that comfortable weather will continue not only through the weekend, but through much of next week as well, the first week of August, temperatures below normal for much of the Mid-Atlantic region, all the way from D.C. to New York City and uh, New England as well. Ingredient number two, we have a mid-level jet. This is actually 850 millibar uh, winds, uh, and, and there are quite strong winds in the, in the lower and the middle level of the atmosphere. This is a forecast map of 850 millibar, a couple thousand feet above the surface as of this morning, and that too drops to the south and east. And uh, these upper level winds that are quite strong really will have some what we call uh, directional wind shear and that raises the possibility of some tornadic activity, certainly isolated tornadoes on the table in the mid-Atlantic region this afternoon into the early evening in addition to the other severe weather parameters as hail and heavy rainfall. This is the forecast map for late afternoon and here we go, a bullseye of the strong winds just above the surface late in the afternoon, early evening. This is really about 7 o'clock tonight and again that raises the possibility of damaging winds and even isolated tornadoes in this severe weather threat that moves off the coast in the overnight hours. Well let's now wrap up with the radar reflectivity maps from the high resolution model of the, G, of the uh, NAM. This is uh, early this morning, 8 o'clock this morning, forecast map from the 60 run. And that again is uh, the remnants of that line that crossed over Wisconsin and Michigan in the overnight hours, now over the eastern Great Lakes. And it holds together. And look at this impressive line here. This is in the middle of the day. So again, this is not a late afternoon, evening a type of scenario. It's more or less an afternoon into the evening scenario. Watch out as early as 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the I-95 Carter region. Let's keep moving forward and here we go. It crosses central Pennsylvania during the afternoon hours and then uh, reaches the eastern part, the I-95 part of the mid-Atlantic region uh, later in the afternoon into the early evening hours. It could ultimately end up being 3, 4, 5 p.m all the way to 7, 8, 9 p.m., but watch out as early as 2 or 3 o'clock in the I-95 Carter region. And here we go into the overnight hours. It all moves off the eastern seaboard. Northwest winds develop by morning. It'll be a much different feel on Friday as compared to today with lowering humidity value, uh, values, uh, more comfortable temperatures. Highs probably only 80 to maybe 82 degrees in places like D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, maybe 83, 84 in D.C., but much more comfortable with lowering humidity and a, a, a stiff northwest breeze and downright cool temperatures for the last morning of the month of July. On Saturday morning, expect to see the 50s in much of the I-95 Carter region again on Saturday morning. Uh, certainly suburban areas all along I-95 should drop down well into the 50s by Saturday morning and that comfortable weather pattern that begins on Friday continues through the weekend and through much of next week and much of the eastern half of the nation. Now there is a possibility of a kind of a wet pattern developing also later next week along the eastern seaboard and we'll focus in on that over the next few days but watch out for a severe weather possibility this afternoon into the early evening across the mid-Atlantic region and the severe weather threat includes hail, damaging wind gusts, heavy rains, and even isolated tornadoes. That's it for now. For ParatonWeather.com, I'm meteorologist Paul Dorian.